Hi everyone, welcome back to Fishing Planet. Here we are, we haven't done anything for a while, so we are back and we're gonna try something new. So, we're almost level eight, which is pretty cool, and we've been fishing down in Missouri, in the home state, uh, and we have the opportunity to catch bass, catfish, crappy, and panfish, with a yellow against the, uh, the pike. We did unlock New York some time ago, um, and we're so close to level 8 and unlocking Colorado. So let's go and check out New York for a change of scenery. We can't get anything really that exciting. We can get some um, walleye, uh, we've got some crappy, got more panfish, but we can get pike here as well. So let's go for three days. It's going to cost us a bit more, but we've got the cash. Uh, so let's travel to New York and see what's going on. The reason I want to go to New York, and I've re bought the advanced license for three days in New York, is I want to learn how to catch pike. So that is our challenge. I haven't done this. This is literally I've just upgraded. So um, this should be interesting. Okay, here we are in New York, New York. Uh, coming, coming, coming. Lovely uh, fishing spot on the west bank of Emerald Lake. It's a perfect sunrise view. Location in the air of Midland Charm. Here the shallow sandy shore gradually descends into untamed depth and the placid still surface of the lake is disturbed only by the occasional crappy hunting just under the surface of the water or feasting upon unsuspecting flies. Blah da blah 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 This gets where it gets more interesting. All your worries dissolve into concentrates on peaceful, peaceful meditation as you fish the day away for Northern Pike, Chain Packerel, Golden China, and uh, yellow perch hiding in the tree roots and wee beds offshore. Cool. This one over here. Oh, hang on. What about this one? This is a deck. And we have redfin pick pickerel, northern pike. Catch them some trophies. Okay, so we're going to start off at 5 a.m. and it's going to be a reasonably sunny day. And they're going to get active about you know, midnight and 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. So, um,. Let's have a look at the locations. Let's start off on the little bit of decking, shall we? Why not? Let's go. Now, I'm reading up. Pike tend to like structures in... Oh, it's a bit murky, isn't it? They tend to like um, structures in the water. So, this is our location. And I think that location there is the other place. So, when you're looking for pike, um, we've got the completely the wrong rod set out. We don't want that at all. Uh, we want to go with a. Uh, we've got some spoons, but it's dark and a bit misty. So let's go for something that's going to be really glittery. Let's go for a gold, and should we go for a quarter ounce or a sixth ounce? Obviously, that's bigger. Um, let's have a look. What I've done, I've stuck the um, the magfin braid on there braided line uh, which can take up to six pounds now pike are averaging on the Wikipedia it says about 5.5 pounds obviously the big ones can go up to 26 pounds so um, and maybe a bit more so the chances of us catching one of those on our first attempt are minuscule so let's just go let's just try that one for now and we'll see how we get on with that and we'll we'll mix and match and um, we'll see what works for us right let's switch over things so what we're looking for is something like a structure, like a log, or now there is a log over th there. Uh, we could try. I think maybe the other fishing spot might be better. Let's just switch to the other fishing spot. Here we are. Okay, so they, they you can see where the other uh, little decking was, and we've got some logs there. But we've got this log here, so I'm just thinking maybe this is probably going to be a disaster, but. Because um, they hide in the. Uh... They hide in the structures like reeds and. Um, and such. And then they'll they'll pounce out from there. They, they don't generally go around swimming, so. Okay, this is a bit of a waste of time, wasn't it? That was a bit of a waste of time. Let's. Um, Let's reel that one in. Okay, that's not going to work. Okay, you, you probably all told me that wasn't going to work, but you know, maybe they're going to rest underneath the actual deck in them themselves. So let's try over here. 
of that sink and we'll start to wheel it back. We'll do a bit of um, stop start, stop and go as it's called, and see if we can get anything interested. Yep, got something interested, it's not that heavy, but it wants to run. Lovely misty morning, isn't it? I think it's a bit bad bit of weight actually. Now the good thing about we have got the um, advanced license, um, I we can actually keep everything on. Oh, there we go, straight away a northern pike, a young northern pike. Um, fantastic. Let's put him away. So yeah, they they obviously hiding underneath that bit of decking over there, which is pretty cool. So we'll we'll throw it out there again and see if we can grab another bite. So yeah, wow. Pike on my first attempt. That's pretty sweet. And obviously, pike, northern pike, is something that you find in the UK and in Europe, all over the place, as well as America. So it's quite a it's quite a common fish. My my little casting spoon is all over the place. It's going from the top to the bottom. There we go. Try, I can't get any straight and slow. Okay, we'll just give up on that one. That was a bit of a disaster. I just could not get any any movement or any flow with that one. Let's try that again. You know, and I will stipulate once more, I'm no fisherman. I don't fish for a hobby. I don't fish for a job. I, I don't fish. Um, but I do enjoy this game. <laughs> I know a lot of people are saying there's a lot of things which aren't accurate compared to real life fishing, which, you know, it's never going to be, to be fair. As long as, if you know, people who do fish in real life can, they have that knowledge, and if they can use some of that in the game, then that's brilliant. But, you know, don't expect it to be a, a perfect simulation. There never will be. Okay, well, let's try a bit of twitching then and see if that makes any difference. It's not the most active part of the uh, the day. That'll come during the night hours. Oh, we've, we've snagged. And I don't know if anyone else has ever been able to break a snag. I have never successfully unsnagged. Never. Never, ever, ever. Ugh. I tried all the advice they give you, you know, give some slack, try and flick it out, but nothing ever works. We'll tighten it up, try and pull it free. Uh, the strain on that rod. No, we're just going to cut it. Happens a lot, happens a lot, especially if you're going for uh, fish like. Um, bass which like to look around the, the reed beds and stuff so um should we what do we have last time do we have the, the points I can't remember what we had on last time now I did buy these spoons which are you know a third of an ounce which are quite big we're sticking with gold because it's quite a dull day and hopefully gold will get more of a more of a um a nibble than the silver. The silver ones are good for sunny days. So let's try this spoon. Now these do a little flip flap in the water, so I'm guessing a stopping, maybe twitching on these would be quite good. Your line is snagged straight away, straight away. Oh, I'm not even going to bother wasting my time. As I say, I have never ever unsnagged a line, and I think it's absolutely a joke. There's probably a a way to do it, but all right, come on, let's try and get this better. And you never snag a line when you've got some pointless cheap bit of kit on it. It's always your nice shiny reels, your nice shiny spinners, your nice shiny spoons, which always get lost. Guarantee it. All right, let's do a bit of um, stop go. Try and keep it off the the bottom. 
Right, 66 foot. Look at that, it's all over the place. Why is it all over the place? Is there like a current there or something? There you go, got something. So it's our first catch with the spoon. It's a yellow perch. Well, we've not caught a yellow perch before, so that's something new. Uh, it's 0.6 of a pound. Uh, let's keep that as our first perch. That's lovely. Okay, uh, let's, um, let's try over this side for a bit of variety. Okay, so it wasn't a pike, but we haven't caught a perch before, so I'm quite happy with that. So we stop go. Struggling to get the old technique right today. Yeah, nothing there. Um, we're gonna great keys all over the place. Gonna relocate a little bit and see if we can go in front of that about there. It's not gonna be a short one. This. So we're gonna reel that back and try twitching. Too quick. Okay, uh, we've had moderate success here. Let's switch over to the other place. And what I want to do is uh, we'll actually fish towards those logs rather than what we were doing and see if there's anything exciting in those logs. Look, watch this go straight into the reed beds. Okay, not too bad. Okay, fine. Shove it over there. As I say, pike like structures to hide under, around. So that log and those reeds are probably okay. Obviously, we found that little one under this uh, little decking jetty thing. Lift and drop. Oh, it's a new technique we haven't used before. So you what, let's pull that up. I'm going to switch my spoon out and go back to the... Um, the casting spoons. So let's go for a quarter. Uh, no, we're not having too big a fish at the moment, are we? So we'll stick to this one. Bobbing and weaving, bobbing and weaving. Come on. No, it's right on the surface now. Let's sink a bit. Oh, I'm making an absolute horlix of this. Oh, there's another log there, so let's go on temp fight. Obviously, that's quite shallow there. So they're probably not going to be there. That's all over the place, look at that. I wonder if it's indicative of how shallow the water is there, maybe? I just cannot get that flow working very well today. It's just not smooth and it's not, oh, this is rubbish.
Right, let's come over here near the log and we'll try for the pier again. That's where we've had the most success. Uh, our line has become snagged straight away. Brilliant! I mean, yeah, I don't know what to say. This gets, I get really frustrated with these stupid line snags. Obviously the better equipment you can get stuff which doesn't snag as much and uh, but it's, it just, it feels, yes it does happen, of course it happens in real life, all the time, but it feels in this game it's put in there as a money drain rather than anything else. You know, in games there's always mechanics to drain money out of you, uh, like repairing weapons and tools and that kind of thing in other games, and that feels like very much the cash drain in this one. Uh, he's got a reasonable weight to this fish. He's uh, swimming around in circles, which is um, a bit silly. A young northern pike. Hooray! Point eight. He's our heaviest one so far. Uh, we'll keep him in case we don't get a better one. So yeah, it definitely seems to be around the little pier stroke bit of decking where we are getting majority of our uh, nibbles so that a bit of advice which I read which was uh, they like structures is obviously clearly well we could throw it out in the middle of the lake to see if that tests it but then I'm, I've got a funny feeling that's going to be a waste of time On this one, oh, I think there's a fish following that. There have been times when you pull your rod out and you just see the little fish who's almost there, almost struck, and didn't quite get there. Let's let's swing this out as far as we can into the lake. We'll get it'll get, it'll get stuck on some submarine or something underneath the water, which you can't quite see, and we'll just see if we can. Uh, Bring it back, just to see if there is anything out in the middle of the lake. I don't think there should be, as I say, pike should always be, by nature, near structures. Oh, but we got something, which is probably going to prove us completely wrong. As I say, I, I, I say that, that they should always be near structures. I haven't got a clue, I've read that on Wikipedia. But you know, when somebody does a bit more fishing than me, I kind of take their uh, their advice on it because I haven't got a clue. Oh, this is quite a big fish, I think. Come here. Here you come. Don't go in that log. No, you don't. Over this way. Over this way. It's another. S it's a redfin pickerel. Oh, that's quite nice. Look at that. It's lovely. Point six. Not very heavy. Oh, we'll uh, we'll keep that one. So there we go. We got a northern pike. Yellow perch and now a red fin pickerel. This is quite the safari of fish we're catching today. Yeah, sure, it's not exactly what I was going for, but this is me playing this uh, pike fishing blind. And you know, the red fin pickerel is kind of like the same uh, family, I'm guessing, because they look pretty similar. Again, don't know fish. Not a biologist <laughs> or whatever fish expert. If there's such a thing as a fish species expert, which doesn't, which if a biologist doesn't cover it, but I'm pretty, pretty sure it would. Oh, got nothing. Oh, whoops. This is quite a small one because I lifted that straight out of the water. A young northern pike. Lovely. A beautiful little fish. A little shot. Very, very famous for. Um, nipping ducklings off the water. You just used to see ducklings and all you'd see this little blob of water and this duckling just gets sucked down as the pike used to come up and eat it. Uh, we'll release the young pike. Um, okay, so my idea of having to go for structures seems completely pointless now. They're obviously, at this time of the day, out in the middle of the lake. So I feel sorry about that bit of advice. It's obviously rubbish. A 
and they seem to like the stop and go motion. Well, all I can say is, in 20 minutes I've become more of a successful pike fisherman than I've ever been a catfish fisherman, so um, I'm not too disheartened with our, our, our catch so far. This has gone to part now, I can't, it's slowing down the reel speed a bit. Oh, got something. Yeah, New York at the moment seems to be, oh, so it's another young northern pike by the looks of it. Bring him into the shallow. Come here. Oh, it's a grass pickinelle. We got another fish. Again, looks to be part of the pike family. A grass pickinelle, 1.6 pounds. Lovely green, silky body with little pink and reddish tipped fins. Gorgeous. We'll keep that one. Wow, is that four different species we've caught today? Amazing. So yeah, this is um. I know these aren't whopper, these are no trophy size, but they are still nice looking fish. And the weights aren't great, true, but it doesn't matter. We're learning and we'll, we'll hone our technique and next time we'll be after the biggies. And then pretty soon we'll be level 8 and then we can unlock Colorado and we can go fishing for trout or whatever it is on there. It's getting more and more exciting. Now the good thing about this game, obviously you have basic and advanced licenses for each of the uh, the locations. Um, and basically, if you look at the basic license, it says you can only catch certain amount of the, or keep certain amount of the fishes you you catch. Uh, but on the advanced one, you can literally have anything. You can keep anything you catch, which is good. Whoa! <laughs> I was just reeling that in because I did. Wow! We'll release that little young one. one point seven eight, which is quite nice. Another nine XP. He's a young northern pike. I, I was actually just I thought that was done and I was just pulling that one in. I'm gonna go a little bit closer to the uh to the pier to see if we can attract any big ones out. Yeah, that was a bit of a surprise that one. But yeah, what was I saying? Oh yes, the licenses. So the advanced ones, you can literally pick up anything you want. I've I've spent about 150 in-game dollars. I've got something else, um, which is basically giving me an advanced a license for New York for the next three days. Uh, but the good thing is, if you spend like 200, sorry, 2,000 in-game dollars, you can. I think that's the cost of a, an unlimited advanced license here. And it's it's similar to on the other sites as well. It's cheaper in Missouri because that's obviously your home state. Um, but yeah, you can literally buy everything, including an unlimited um, licenses um, for all the in-game stuff, so that it doesn't cost you a thing. Obviously, you can buy premium stuff, which gives you in-game cash for your own hard cash, and that will allow you to skip on quicker. But it doesn't need to be. Um, but you know, I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, we're, we're catching loads of these northern pike, young though they may be, and uh, actually let's just keep that one and let's just have a look in our in our net to see what we've got, because um, that's been quite an interesting day's fishing. Um, so we've got the northern pike, the two young ones we kept, now we've got a yellow perch which is a beautiful fish, the renf red fin pickinel which is, oh she's a mean looking beast isn't she, and the grass pickinel. Wow, obviously they're slightly Smaller, oh, they're obviously the same. Picanel, they're obviously the same family, but they look they look very similar or related to the the pike. But obviously, that there, there is a marked difference in a the body shape and also the, uh, the dorsal fins and stuff, isn't there? So that is difference. Hmm. But we're we're doing. I'm reasonably pleased with uh, with our progress today. That hasn't been too bad, and we're not a million miles away from level 8 which would be great so I'm going to just do I'm going to continue doing my um, days fishing and see how it goes and next time maybe we'll do some nighttime fishing and we'll catch on that uh, the busy period or the active period at night just after midnight uh, and see if we can get any other big ones um, but I'm just going to try and 
practice a little bit off screen now, hone my skill when we run up to uh, the witching hour. Uh, so yeah, thanks for joining me. This has been, as I say, a blind look at pike fishing, and it's been reasonably successful. Yeah, we got a couple of young northern pikes, which is what we were going for. Not technically brilliant, but not a disaster either. And we also got the pickanels and the perch, which is what was it? which was a lovely uh, distraction as well. And we've just caught something. A young northern pike. Fantastic. And on that bombshell, we'll end it. What a beauty. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we'll get more proficient and we'll do some better pike fishing in future. But for now, I'll leave you. I'll see you next time.